we had that <clears throat> album. Actually, ours was a cassette, <laughs> which is kind of in that middle ground, someplace between albums and albums. And, because people are listening to vinyl again, so, yeah, so, and that song, as I was preparing for the sermon, that song just kept running through my head, so I went online, and, um, yeah, I mean, like, it says in the bulletin that the person who made the video has made it available to congregations, and the songwriters are behind that as well, so it's all, all good, so, please join me in prayer. God, you are patient with us, and you want us to bear the fruit of patience. Open our hearts and minds today to hear you free our wills, subconsciousness, and training to follow you, and open my mouth to speak your word to your praise. Amen. So I have two introductions this morning. Uh, the first one's a story, and then I have some pictures. At least one person in the congregation says that the only reason I'm still preaching here is so that I can show you pictures. <laughs> and they shall remain unnamed. So about a year ago, uh, and I'm glad to see that uh, Travis is online, Travis and Jessica, uh, we left the church and we pulled out behind Travis and Jessica heading south. Um, now for several reasons, I don't like following church members in my car. Um, I sometimes think that people will drive slowly because the pastor's behind them. Or <laughs> um, Paul already says not him, and that's good, because I'll be right on it. I, 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 it's not good for me that people are driving slow because I'm not patient. I have kind of a heavy right foot. Um, I'm not the world's most patient person by a stretch. So we got to Stierton, and they turned off on the 8th. I went, okay, great. We're just going to go south um, to the 4th. Um, and then we got to the corner of Floridale Road and Highway 86. The light was red. I mean, good thing doesn't happen anymore, right? There's a traffic circle there now. Uh, and I love traffic circles. But at the light, the person ahead of me the light turned green, and I counted to maybe five. Um, and they, so I'd just be a little tooting the horn, because sometimes people are busy talking or listening to a song or playing on their phone or something like that. Uh, they turned towards Elmira, and we drove home. And a couple of weeks later, Jessica noted how nice it was for me to toot at them at the corner <laughs> <laughs> as they were heading to Elmira. <clears throat> and I hadn't realized how much shorter the 8th and the Floridale Road is than, the four, than going down the 11th and the 4th. Um, so I didn't realize it was them that had gotten ahead of me. My bad. My impatience. Now, if you don't believe that I'm impatient, now we're going to look at some pictures, okay? Um, these are pictures, Anne Marie took all of these pictures. I just give credit. So Anne Marie took all of these pictures, and please just watch them. I'm just gonna, gonna go through them um, fairly quickly. Yeah, there's, there's me. You might, you might notice what Anne-Marie's taking pictures of in these pictures as we go along. Um, uh, you starting to catch on what's going on here? I, I should tell you that I chose from among our many pictures uh, of that I could have had far more pictures of exactly this scene for Anne Marie. <laughs> I could tell you where each of these places is, but <clears throat> no, I won't do that. Well, that's Les Alicant, yeah. That was a very nice restaurant. <laughs> um, so I think you're kind of catching the idea here um, <clears throat> that. I tend to get finished something sooner than Anne-Marie, and I start moving on. And so she's taking pictures of stuff, and she gets a lot of pictures of my back, wherever we go. Um, I noticed this as I was going through pictures. We share our pictures back and forth. And um, so there I head off, impatient again. Um, now, we found ways to work around my impatience. When we go to art galleries, I have my phone along and my Kobo in my bag. So that when I'm finished, I can sit down and either do French on my phone or start reading the novel that I've started until Anne-Marie is done in the art gallery. So I can be patient with her um, and don't, you know, don't go back in to see what's happened and whether she's been abducted by Van Gogh or something like that. Um, but um, so patience and impatience is our theme today. 
Um, and maybe we should think of, begin with what impatience is, or rather what, what patience is and isn't. So we heard the song <clears throat> about uh, from the music machine, and we listened to this with our kids uh, when they were small. And um, yeah, so we have this song about Herbert. There was a little snail called Herbert who was so very slow. He caused a lot of traffic jams wherever he would go. The ants were always getting mad, and the beetles, they would fume. But Herb would always poke along and sing this little tune. Have patience, have patience. Don't be in such a hurry. When you get impatient, you only start to worry. Remember, remember that God is patient too. And think of all the times that others have to wait for you. And we have the, the scene where he was, when he was younger, he was also impatient, often getting in trouble, did things on a double, till his father, who was even slower than he was, um, took him aside. So, you know, you might get stuck behind a crawling snail on the highway or someplace like that. Or a buggy. How many of you this morning got behind a buggy and had to take your time? I did, several times. So, um, And then the pastor who was ahead of me passed them in a hurry, so I thought I was allowed to do that too. <clears throat> so according to uh, Frank Hernandez and Sherry Saunders Powell, the writers of this song, there's more to patience than learning how to not be impatient. There's more to, than impatience at work in learning patience. So we have this line in there about worry. Um, so I know this is true about me. Impatience can be a sign of something else going on in my life. It can be a sign of grief, actually. Um, if I'm feeling grief, and I'm not always aware that I'm feeling grief, I can get impatient with folks around me. It's as if I kind of I expect that the whole world and everyone in it will give me a bit of slack because of my grief. They should be aware of my need and not make demands on me or do things that make me expend extra energy. Impatience is sometimes a sign of grief, and it can be kind of underlying in the background. And I have to say that this war in the Ukraine and then the war in Palestine are massive griefs for all of us. Impatience can also be a sign of anger. Anger is the emotion that we feel when we believe or sense that something inappropriate, unjust, or otherwise wrong has happened. We can be impatient when we think that another person should know better, do better, um, think of others' needs more, including mine, our needs, you know? Impatience is sometimes a sign of anger, like when something uh, we need is taking too long um, the, looks like the person doesn't know what they're doing, perhaps. We're impatient towards another person. Maybe they're incompetent. They just can't get what we want fast enough. So anger can lead to impatience, which can lead to more anger, and it, yeah, it can be a vicious circle. Anxiety, or rather, impatience can be a sign of anxiety or worry. If our minds are preoccupied with something when we have a low level of energy for then we might have a low level of energy for others. We can really easily miss their needs, their emotions, that they're trying their best to do what is necessary. We can be impatient with others because of our needs, our preoccupations, our worry and anxiety. So I just want to look a little bit at this for a moment, at this idea that one kind of emotion can sap the energy from us being able to do something else. How can grief and anger and anxiety Eat up our energy to be patient, for example. But the story's a little bit about something different. But it's about one emotion eating up energy for something else. Now, we have a friend who's um, been struggled with money for many years. And it's not because she's a bad money manager. Um, when she got to 65, she failed for several years to make her application for Canada Pension. You know, when you apply for Canada Pension, no matter how little you're going to get, the government automatically makes you eligible for old age security and guaranteed investments uh, supplement. You can, they, they will look at that and see whether you are eligible for those. And so she failed to apply for CPP, and folk who knew her were impatient with what looked like her foot dragging. But she had no energy to apply because day-to-day -day living was taking so much of her energy. Worry about this week's bills was sapping all of her energy, so she had none left for applying. Now, in the end, she waited so long that she actually didn't get all that she was eligible for because the government only goes back so far in retroactively giving you the money. And she kicks herself for that. 
but she knows that she couldn't have done anything else. One kind of emotional work was sapping away the energy to do other kind of emotional work. And grief and anger and worry can sap away our energy to be patient. Impatience, though, can also be a sign of fear. This is ramping up the emotional cost that we're paying. We're not only anxious, afraid that something might happen, but we're actually afraid of something that is in the possibility of happening right now. And then we don't often have the energy to be patient. And, and that can actually be a good thing. Being too patient, waiting too long to deal with a fearful thing can be bad. Impatience actually has a positive role sometimes. And patience might be not good. And, and in a positive way, impatience can be a sign that there is a better way to do this. Frederick Banting was impatient with the effects of diabetes on children and adults. And so he, together with Charles Best, J.J.R. McLeod, and James Collop, found a way to produce insulin, to purify it, and safely give it to people. Impatience created something positive. So patience seems to generally be the fruit of leaving behind anxiety, setting aside grief and anger. Perhaps it's also setting aside the need to be in control. You know, I can think that you could do your job better, and I will tell you how to do it. How many of us appreciate that? I consider that an uncomfortable laugh, and you agree with me. <clears throat> um, patience seems to be trust that God has things in control, and the humility to know that I may not have all the answers, or that my answers are absolutely the best all the time. Patience is a big thing, this patience, this fruit of the Spirit. In our scripture today, James uh, was writing first century Christians about how to live. And he used both the word, rather the word patience and the word endurance in that passage. And by the way, the word in Greek for endurance is sometimes translated as patience. Their endurance and patience are very much connected. Christians, James writes, are to be patient to endure until the end comes. So in those early days of Christianity, there was a fever pitch of waiting for Jesus' soon return. But we know that it hasn't happened yet. Instead, many generations of Christians have had to wait both for, for that completion of life, Jesus returning, and the natural processes that end life here. Patience is trusting that God has the best in mind, that God is still at work, even things don't work out the way we want, and that God will be at work into the future on things that we cannot, in, not, cannot complete in our lifetimes. James then gives the example of the farmer. Planting seeds in the ground, the farmer has to wait until that first leaf pushes up through the soil, and then the stalk. And eventually they wait for, for rain or sun, usually both in turn, for the right conditions to swell the seeds and then to dry them so that they can be harvested and stored safely. Lots of patience in being farmers. While the Christians were waiting, all the things that we talked about already can, that can cause us to be impatient were there in the early church. They grumbled, probably at God, for sure at each other. Waiting and waiting, suffering persecution, worry about safety, wondering if they had made the right choice to throw their lot in with these Jewish sectarians. James wrote that they were to follow the example of the Old Testament prophets. Isaiah's school of prophets, uh, writing at the end of the exile, 500 years earlier, had said the kingdom of God is about to come. But it hadn't. And generation after generation of prophets had waited. And this is not just a group or theological waiting that's called for. Look at Job, James writes. He lost everything except for his wife, and she wasn't particularly helpful at his lowest point. But, you know, I suspect that it was her own grief at losing her children and security and the fear of losing her husband that made her short-tempered, difficult, very impatient. Curse God and die already, she said to him. But like Job, James' call to Christians um, is the, James' call to the Christians then and now is to endure, to trust God's purposes, believe that God will be compassionate and merciful. So when are you impatient? 
In order to bear the spiritual fruit of patience, we need to figure out what robs us of our ability to be patient. So what makes you impatient? And so the, the, the suggestion here is watch yourself for the times when you're impatient. Is it good impatience or is it destructive? Hurting others when you are anxious or grieving or angry. Um, pray about what you see in yourself. Now, I, I don't want you to celebrate when you're impatient, but I want you to see that as a sign that you're learning. Like when you see I'm being impatient, what's going on? That's a good thing. The impatience not, but the what's going on is a good question to be asking ourselves. Pray about that. God wants each of us to bear this fruit and will work with us to help develop it in our lives. So we apologize for our impatience and we work at change. And this happens over and over and over again. Maybe sometimes you go like, oh man, I, ever, I was impatient this morning. Remember several hours later. Good, you noticed. Apologize. Next time you go, oh, I was just impatient. And sometimes we can keep on pushing that back to, I am being impatient. Or I'm about to be impatient, but I know how to stop. Um, to, I think, an impatient an impatient episode is coming here. Keep on learning and seeing each of these as an opportunity to keep on pushing that back and learning how to be patient. So this series is about being good news people. So how does patience, what does that have to do with being good news people? I think there are two things that come to my mind, two components of the, of the spirit fruit in terms of being good news people. First, being grumpy, demanding, angry, anxious, spilling toxic grief over others is not good news. Just period. It's not good news. If we're, that's the way we are with other people. We are not being good news. If we are the kind of people whom others want to avoid, then we are not good news people. Patience is a character trait that attracts people to us. And then when they say, you're, you're patient, that gives us a chance to start talking about why. Well, my community helps me to be patient. The love of God helps me to be patient. It helps us to give, uh, get opportunities to be speakers and doers of good news. And secondly, patience is waiting, it's humility, it's trusting God, it's hoping. Bringing good news to others is a work of patience. Like crops, it takes time, lots of time. And we can talk about, you know, planting seeds in the ground and you plan to harvest that same year or in the next year. But if you're planting an apple tree, if you're planting a walnut tree, it's a lot longer process. People, unfortunately, have been put off by Christians' negative messages about God being impatient and angry all the time. It's going to take a long time for people to see God's love and patience in us and believe that God loves them and is patient with them. We need to be practicing a lot of patience to be good news people. Patience is a character trait and a way of living. As good news people, we need both of those things to be good news and to bring good news to others. So I want to invite you into a time to think about this. So you may want to clear your laps, perhaps open your hands in a gesture of receiving, and close your eyes if you feel comfortable. And you can take five breaths. I'm going to count five of mine to give us a quiet time here. In your imagination or memory, go to a place that is peaceful and safe. And invite God to join you there. However you imagine God. And just bask in God's love for you there. Maybe imagine sitting on a bench and the sun shining down on you. It's a bit of a cooler day and the sun shines down, that sun is 
God's love basking in you. Remember a time when you were impatient. Was it good impatience? And if not, think about what else was happening for you. Was it anxiety or grief or anger, the need to control? When were you impatient? What else was happening for you? Talk to God about that. As you sit with God, ask God to make you more patient. Helping to heal the things that make you impatient. Receive the gift of God's patience and love to share. To be a good news person. God, you are so patient with each of us, with humanity at large and with we Christians. You know how much we need your patience. Teach us what makes us impatient so that we can be healed and live lives of patience and love. To you be praise and honor. Amen.